and welcome to the first Sunday of our new series called Mighty Mom. Yes, sir. May is all about celebrating motherhood. So for this month, we will talk about amazing women in the Bible who also happen to be moms. We have a lot to learn about God through the lives of these moms. But first, Abby Nolasco is celebrating her birthday this May. So happy birthday, Abby! Happy birthday, Abby! And also shout out to Rain, Hulo, Catalia from Talisay City Negros Occidental. Okay, Teacher Kiko, our main mama for today is Sarah. Sarah, Sarah. Oh, oh, like the little princess, Sarah. The one I watched from the TV when I was... No, no, no not that Sarah. Sarah, the wife of Abraham from the Bible. That Sarah. Oh, I yes, love that, that Sarah. Sarah. Sarah was described in the Bible to have a quiet and gentle spirit. Today, we're going to try if we can both be quiet and gentle. Oh, that's going to be hard for me, <laughs> Teacher Anika. I'm loud and expressive. <laughs> Same. We're going to say so this is going to be a challenge. For our game for today, the goal is to be as quiet as possible. Quiet, so no talking. And no laughing. Then no screaming, Teacher Anika. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but okay, we can do this. The goal of the game is to go as quietly as possible, transferring these raw eggs from this box to the other box. Using chopsticks. Each of us has 20 points each. Teacher Annika has 20 points. I have 20 points. So when an egg cracks or breaks, that's a point deducted from our total points. But when you make a sound, that's minus two points. Oh no! This is going to be very, very hard. But push! You can Jesus. do it! <laughs> okay, fine.
Lagi ingat apa ni? Oh man, it's a bit challenging to be quiet and gentle, especially for me, Teacher Annika. <laughs> quiet because we weren't allowed to talk, and gentle because we were careful not to crack the eggs. That's correct. The Bible describes our mighty mom for today as a person with a quiet and gentle spirit. We'll learn more about this later. But first, let's prepare our hearts to worship God. Instructions flashed on the screen. Dear Mom, I'm writing to you so that you would always remember how much I love you and how much the Lord loves you. I want to remind you of all the amazing things God has done to our family, how involved He was in building it. I remember Dad's stories. From the time the Lord called out Dad to leave his homeland, to journey through the desert, and find a promised land for our family, 
God was with us. Remember how He stayed with you from the bad situation after another? Wandering the wilderness, bandits kept at bay, or rescuing Uncle Lot, and the promises He kept after so long to bless you and make you a blessing, to give you a son, me. And I remember your stories too, of how stubborn and doubtful Dad was sometimes, and how much trouble that got you. How the Pharaoh almost took you as his wife. How Hagar bore a half-brother for me and nearly destroyed our family. Well, it took a while for Dad to completely trust God enough, even to almost sacrifice me. And through all that, you, Mom, you were with him, his steadfast wife. Oh, I'm sure you protested and gave Dad a piece of your mind. I was told you even laughed when you heard the promise I'd be born. But Dad always said how amazed he was with such a strong woman like you would submit to even the wildest callings he received from the Lord. I love you, Mom, for how beautiful you are, not just on the outside, but especially on the inside. For the gentle, quiet spirit that you are. For how you called Dad your Lord and followed him even in the toughest times. It taught me to obey and trust in God. And that he always keeps his promises. Your son, Isaac. <laughs> oh, 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 hi guys. Why am I crying? Oh, I'm writing a letter to my mom. Now, don't you love writing letters? When you think about your mom, doesn't it just break your heart? Well, we're going to have the whole month, we're going to be talking about moms. In fact, Apostle Peter wrote a letter to the early Christians, and he was talking about women. He was talking about women in general, and a mom in particular. He wrote about the woman named Sarah, the mother of nations. And this is what he wrote in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 to 6. It is not fancy hair, gold jewelry or fine clothes that should make you beautiful no 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 your beauty should come from within you the beauty of a get this gentle and quiet spirit say that to yourself gentle and quiet spirit this beauty will never disappear and it's worth very much to god it was the same with the holy women who lived long ago and followed God. They made themselves beautiful in this way. They accepted the authority of their husbands. And like Sarah, Sarah obeyed Abraham, her husband, and called him her master. And you women are true children of Sarah if you always do what is right and are not afraid. Oh Lord, please bless the preaching of your word. Open our hearts to your word in Jesus' name. Okay, hold on, hold on. You're, you're listening to what I said and you're saying, all my ates, all my mommies, all my, you know, my friends, the, the girls in the class. You say, don't, you might tell them, oh, keep quiet, ah, quiet lang kayo. No, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not about just being quiet. Some of the girls are thinking, you mean I can't say what I feel? I can't express my mind? No, no, no. It's not about not expressing yourself. He's writing about not focusing on appearances. During that time, women were looked about like objects, like just, just the, how they dress, how they look, and they were being judged that way. And even today, sometimes we're being judged that way, right? What Peter was saying was that we should prioritize not just the outward beauty, but we should prioritize the inner beauty. It's not wrong to dress well or accessorize, you know, acting cool, looking cool. You know, that's all right. But this must never be more important than the condition of our hearts. Peter talked about Sarah. Sarah was the example. She had a, what, what kind of spirit was it again? She was a woman of a gentle and quiet spirit. Instead of focusing on the way she looked or how she dressed, you know, come on, the hair and all that style. Sarah put more importance on having a good heart. Heart. And she followed her husband. She supported her husband in everything. And her husband, Abraham, if you look back at the story, you go back to their story, he made a lot of mistakes. But Sarah would still support him. Now, now, Sarah wasn't just beautiful on the outside. She was beautiful. Men saw that she was so beautiful. But even inside, she was beautiful. Her outside beauty matched her inside beauty. Wow. 
Amazing, don't you think? That's what Peter was honoring. And that's something that God values also. If you look at verse 4, he says there, God values the, the Spirit. And that's what God wants to see in us also, that our insides matches our outside. Okay, that's our point. The point I want you to get this, that true beauty is found in a person's godly character. Because that's what God is looking at. God is looking at the heart. There's another verse in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. He says, God doesn't look at the outward appearance. God looks at the inside, what's in our hearts. And that's what matters to Him. So what does godly character look like? What does this gentle and quiet spirit that Peter is talking about, what does that look like? Well, another thing that we could think about is that a person is patient, loving, kind. There are descriptions about that kind of love all over the Bible. Not easily angered. You know, this building, oh, breathe. Breathe, you know, it's like some, do you see your moms and some of your <laughs> atas doing like that? They're, they're also very forgiving. As kids, we got to think about obeying our moms, you know, even our ates and our titas, obeying them. That's what a gentle and quiet spirit might look like. But even more than that, specifically in the letter of Peter, he was specifically talking about women, about the wives in the church rather. I know we can use it as men and women, boys and girls, we can be gentle and quiet and humble and loving and kind. But he wants us to remember our, our mothers through Sarah. You know, our mothers, you know, our daddy's wives, or whether our Lola or Tita, somebody, whoever, whoever is taking care of you, whatever woman is taking care of you. I mean, you look at them. They may not be perfect because it's hard. I'm sure the girls will agree, it's hard to be a woman. Do you think it's hard to be a woman these days? Yes, because you're, you're being judged sometimes, you're being told not to do this or to do that, or you have to prove yourself and you're, you're juggling so many things. Let's look at our moms. They're taking care of the housework. Some of them are, are taking care of our food, cooking our food. Whatever you need for your school, they're helping you out. And there are even, some of them, our moms are also working at the same time. And even throughout all these things that they're juggling, Wow! <laughs> wow, they're still taking care of us. And I hope sometimes, sometimes we get to a mood that we don't want to obey them, right? We don't appreciate them sometimes, right? And even if that happens, they never stop loving us and taking care of us. That's because God wants us to feel His love. He wants us to feel His kind of love through our mothers. Okay? We're going to take time to appreciate them in a little bit, but I want you to remember this. This is our power truth that we're going to remember for throughout the whole month. God also expresses His love to us through a mother's. Okay? Remember that. God also expresses His love through mother's. And the Bible verse, the power verse that we're going to hold on to for the whole month is from Isaiah 49, verse 15. The Lord answers... Can a woman forget the baby she nurses? Can she feel no kindness for the child she gave birth to? Of course not, if, even if she could forget her children. I will not forget you.
Well, I want to shout out to all my friends, Hazel and Raya from the U.S. I know, Raya, you didn't have a mom. You were raised by your dad. No, no, no. Wait a minute. That was it. That was the movie. Okay. Wait a minute. Hazel and Raya from the U.S. Uh, my friends, I know you had your mom. Say hi to your moms. Happy Mother's Day to your moms in the coming week. Uh, Jazzy Kalaya. Again, Simple De La Fuente. Lord. Well, you know, say hi to your moms. Hug your moms for us. Why don't you, everybody right now, go to your moms. Go to your titas. Go to your lolas. You know, invite them to come in and this is what you're learning. We want to appreciate all of you because you know what? You show us the love of Jesus Christ. What the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, a gentle and quiet spirit, and you will find rest for your souls. I know we're all tired and you know, Jesus is the greatest model we could ever have of a gentle and quiet spirit. In fact, he was being led to his death. He was being beaten up, you know, and people were, were mocking him, spitting on him, and he was carrying that cross, and yet he still had the gentle and quiet spirit. He still loved us. He was still kind and patient to us. All the things that God wants, he wants us to be like his son. And that love is available for us every time, the love that died for us, even though we were enemies, even though we weren't obeying him. And let's pray right now, okay? Let's pray for that kind of love for our moms. Get your moms, are your moms with you now? Are your lolas with you now, your titas? Hug them tight, hug them tight, and let's pray for them. Lord, thank you. Thank you for our moms. You can repeat after me. Thank you for our moms. Lord Jesus, please bless mommy or lola or tita. Please fill their hearts up with your love, with your peace, with your strength. Give them rest. Rest even in the hard times and the tough times and in the busiest times. Give them rest and let them know every day of their lives how much you love them and how much we are so thankful that your love comes to us through our moms. Bless them again. We love you, mommy and dad, mommy, rather. We love you, Jesus. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You're awesome, awesome kids. Awesome young men and women. Continue to love your moms, pray for your moms. God bless you all. Hey kids, it's teacher Cami here. And today I'm going to teach you how to look your best. If you want to look handsome or beautiful, you can dress with... And those are some of the ways that you can have a beautiful, quiet, and gentle spirit. And so for our family con, this one's a challenge. How can you develop inner beauty this week? Hello kids! It's craft time with Teacher Plum! That's me! First, I want to say congratulations and best wishes to teacher Kayla, who just got married, and hi to her huddle, Leif Guntinias, Mori Aureliosa, Rael Galindez, Jabez Padora, Zed Nitafan, Bryson, and Tyler Serafica. Hi, kids!
month, I'm sure you remember you met my friend Marco. This time, I'm excited to introduce another friend to you. And her name is Teacher Nikki! Say hi to Teacher Nikki! Hi, Teacher Plum! Hi, Teacher Nikki! It's so nice to have you here. Can you tell me more about yourself and the kids? Oh, so yeah, I also lead my own huddle group. Um, I'm studying right now to become a dentist. I, I love animals. We have a lot of dogs. And I love crafts. That's <laughs> awesome because, you know, today that's exactly what we will be doing. We will be making a craft that will remind us of our lesson. Now, Teacher Nikki and kids, for this craft, we will need the following. So we have here coloring page templates. So this is of a boy and this is a girl. So Teacher Nikki and I are going to be using the girl version because we're both girls. But you can use the boy too if you're a boy. Next, we'll need a glue stick. A glue stick and some washable markers. Just do three, Teacher Plum. I'm glad you asked that because later on, kids will be needing a flashlight. Can we use the ones on our phones? Of course we can. So we can use this or we can use the regular flashlight. It's up to you. Now, let's get crafting. Okay, so Teacher Nikki, we have the girl template over here. And the first step is to color it. So you can color yours and I can color mine. So, for example, I'm going to use black for the hair. I'll use brown for mine. Okay. So, Teacher Nikki, how long have you been handling your huddle group? Two years now. Two um, years? Oh, almost two years because I, it started in July of 2020. So, yeah, it's going to be two years this July. I'm sure a lot of kids here are part of a huddle group. So if you're part of a huddle group, comment down below or just give a woohoo if you're in the classroom and watching this craft segment. So teacher Nikki and I are going to finish coloring our portraits and we'll be right back. Okay, teacher Nikki, can you show the kids what you made? It's so cute! It has a tiny crown! Yes, I colored it in. I used brown for the hair. And Teacher Annika added the crown! Thank you, Teacher Annika! <laughs> and this is mine. I have uh, black and green hair. And I have a bow on top, like Hello Kitty. So, we're not done yet, kids. The next step is to fold our paper in half so that this flap covers our artwork. See, it should be over the artwork, not under. Now, when you folded the paper in half, let's take our glue stick and just put a thin layer of glue over your artwork. So I'm gonna give this to teacher Nikki so she can do it. Thank you. There, like this. Over the drawing, teacher yes. Plum? Oops. This is gonna be cool. Just wait and see. Okay. Okay, that's done. And now we can close the flap so it's glued on top of the drawing. Okay. And ta-da! We're done! This is... But Teacher Plum, <laughs> our artwork really looks like nothing. Well, that's how it seems on the outside. But watch when we take our flashlight. Do you see it? Do you see our artwork? Okay, I'm gonna remove the flashlight. Remove the flashlight. Looks like nothing, right? But with the flashlight, with the light behind, it's there. You can see the drawing. And kids, Teacher Nikki, that's the beauty of our artwork. It was revealed with the light. Today, we learned that inner beauty is more valuable than outward beauty. Yes, and that inner beauty never fades and it pleases God. That's why kids, more than trying to look handsome and pretty on the outside, which I'm sure every one of you are, we must always work on our hearts. Do we have beautiful hearts of kindness? 
generosity, gentleness. You know what? Through the help of the Holy Spirit, we can have beautiful hearts. Let's ask Him to help us develop gentle and quiet spirits by being kind, loving, patient, and forgiving. And that's it for our craft time for today. Remember, you can take photos of yourselves with your hidden beauty artworks. Send them to kidsfort at victory.org.ph by Monday, 5 p.m. And remember, each photo you submit is one raffle entry for our raffle giveaway for the month of May. See you next week, kids! Bye!